awareness mm -hmm. of people's entire lives being wiped out uh, in one swell swoop because uh, the company misinvested uh, their, pe their, uh, their, uh, their, their defined contribution. Dan, if I can just chime in. And very simply put, the defined benefit that AFSCME members have means that you have money for life, no matter how long you live as a mm -hmm. retiree. With a defined contribution plan, it's like a 401k plan. And that's risky for the worker because it depends on Wall Street and the yeah. stock market and your investment returns. Now, if you look at 401ks today, the average person who has a 401k has $32,000 in it. How long do you think a retiree can live on $32,000? Not as long as you're not as long as the life expectancy is. That's, That's right. right. And, and we do have a defined, uh, as Governor Dayton pointed out uh, recently during the election campaign, we do have a defined benefit system in the United States, and it's called Social Security. You pay in over a series of years, the employer pays in over a series of years, and at the end of your work life, you're guaranteed a certain uh, modest amount of money on a monthly basis that you can plan for. So if you take, uh, you know, uh, the pensions that we're talking about, plus Social Security, that's the difference between a retirement of dignity, a modest retirement of dignity, and a, and a, and a retirement of poverty. Franklin Delano Roosevelt felt that without Social Security, uh, we would have a, a country of permanent uh, poverty uh, for mm -hmm. retirees, and that's why Social Security was created. And uh, it's the same thing as our pension system. So these elements together allow uh, uh, you know retired workers who've played by the rules, taken the early bus, who worked hard their whole life to be able to have a modest but dignified retirement. Now, now, now Dan, one, one other piece that I think is important. Lawmakers and the Chamber of Commerce have suggested that government can save taxpayers money if they eliminate right. our defined benefits and replace them with a 401k plan. Now, that won't save money because government still has to pay the people who have paid in for their retirement. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you walk away from your unfunded liabilities. But what it does change, the only thing it changes, is who's investing the money. Mm -hmm. It requires that we let Wall Street get a cut of our benefits. We'd rather have government wisely investing those dollars so that there's a guaranteed return that keeps seniors self-sufficient. And if people like to have, quote, control of their own money, you know, there are, there are, are IRAs or, or, right. uh, right. or other type of uh, tax, tax provisions for, for people who wish to invest their, their own money. You know, mm -hmm. That's, that's a, uh, another option they can do on, on, on top of this, but we have this, we have this base of Social Security and have the base of the of the uh, public employee retirement uh, defined benefit program. And, uh, right. and by the way, we think all workers, not just public workers. I mean, it's a shame what's happened in this country. Defined benefit plans have been eliminated by large corporations while they make record profits. And uh, you know what? Everybody who works for a living in the United States of America uh, should be able to make a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. Mm -hmm. Should be able to have accessible. Uh, quality, affordable health care, and should be able to have a retirement that's dignified. That's not asking too much mm -hmm. after a lifetime of work. Now, you, you uh, mentioned before about uh, uh, workers spending their, their money on, 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 on Main Street, you know, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, do you keep track of your retirees? Uh, you know, are there, are they, is, is, a good, is, is the money uh, being, being spent by people who are living in Arizona or Florida or Texas or some other place? That's a great question, Dan, and, and, uh, and we do keep track of it. And in fact, 90% of, uh, of retired public workers stay in Minnesota. Uh, that benefits our economy and it keeps seeing yourself sufficient. And I would add that uh, uh, the uh, Minnesota pension system pays out uh, more than two and a half billion dollars. It adds $3.3 .3 billion to the state economy. And here's an important point for the viewers. That money creates 22,500 additional jobs in the state of Minnesota. Plus, you know, here in the metro area, we know that a lot of folks who retire like to move to greater Minnesota, uh, where they can be closer to the lake, uh, mm -hmm. even though we're pretty close to the lake right here, yeah. but you can be closer to the lake and, and have life a little less expensively. So if you were to cut these pensions, 
or eliminate these pensions, the impact on greater Minnesota would be even more harmful than the impact it would have mm -hmm. on Metro Minnesota, but it would have a terrible economic impact on the state as a whole. So a lot of money is pumped into the, into the a, economy. A, by, a lot of money by, is pumped into the economy by yeah. retirees, and it's important. 22,500 jobs, uh, we've got seven, over 7% 7 unemployment, 7.1% unemployment, uh, or four or five metro domes full of unemployed. It's no time to cut another 22,500 jobs in our state. Now this, much, the, this pension money that's going to uh, public workers, uh, w where does that money come from? Uh, I know that they have contributed a percentage of their salary, uh, but there's, there's more, more to it than that. You have uh, contributions by the worker, by workers, uh, again, out of their paychecks, they, they contribute money to the plan in order to have a, a dignified retirement. The employer matches that contribution uh, with a similar amount uh, with it together uh, in, uh, in, the, in the private sector. Uh, and, and, and that's why defined benefit plans cost about half of what uh, uh, defined contribution plans cost because th to deliver the same benefit uh, because there's su superior and professional investment management in, uh, in these defined benefit plans as opposed to let's say me or you, at least yeah. I'll say me. <laughs> or, or, you or, me. Or, or you <laughs> I mean heck, how much do most of us know about how to do investing? Mm -hmm. Professional investment managers invest the money and also we pool by putting all this money together we pool the longevity risk so you get better returns and uh, and done more professionally than any of us, most of us anyhow, are capable of doing individually. And, and, and the other part, it's good for the, uh, for the, for the, for the, uh, the deficit, in terms of fixing the deficit and the budget of the state. Uh, state and local taxes collected on our pensions uh, exceed public employer pension contributions by $80 million a year. So this is a plan that, that mm -hmm. pays more than it costs. Yeah. And then the money that, 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 that's coming back to the public employee retire, or public worker retire, retiree, uh, a large part of that is uh, based on uh, in investments made by the state, state investment board. Uh, and Jennifer, am I right? It's about over 60% of, of, the, of, the, of the money going, going to the uh, right. public employee worker. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, over, over 60%. So mm -hmm. very small amount put in by the uh, government, yeah, and and uh, which which is matching what the worker is is uh, deferring his That's right. his or her uh, uh, wages uh, mm -hmm. toward towards that. Yeah. And then it's bringing more tax dollars into government than it's expending. Yeah, and it's producing when the money is spent, it's producing twenty two thousand five hundred jobs in our state's economy. That's a pretty it's a win 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 mm -hmm. for Minnesota. And you know what we can't forget is that state and local taxes are collected on the retirees yes, right. pension benefits mm -hmm. and the amount that's collected exceeds the amount that public employers invest in the pensions by eighty mm -hmm. million dollars so what that means is local governments are collecting money that they can use to sustain vital services mm -hmm. that everyone retired or not needs in their local mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Things like parks, libraries, snow plowing, police and fire protection, that $80 million goes towards that. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, do most uh, ASME retirees uh, also, also receive Social Security? They do. So our modest pension of 13000 mm -hmm. when combined with Social Security, really is the difference between dignity and poverty. Mm -hmm. I remember not long ago I was at a grocery store and there was a senior citizen who was trying to buy dog food because she couldn't afford people food. Retirees shouldn't have to live that way. Yeah. Everyone deserves the kind of pension that we have and that $13,000 combined with Social Security allows a senior to buy people food. There's a small group of very senior, senior citizens we're in what's called the basic plan, and they don't have yeah. Social Security. Uh, but uh, the, the, w the state went to, a, to coordination with Social Security many, many years ago, and there are only a, a, a very few folks left yeah. who are just living on a pension and don't have Social yeah. Security with it. Teachers would be, would be in a similar situation. There were some who stayed on, mm -hmm. I think it was called the basic 
right. basic plan and so forth, and they are gradually uh, uh, eased out of the system. Okay. I know when I, when I started teaching uh, about about a hundred years ago. Uh, uh, or so. Uh, I didn't have a choice to make. I, that's right. I, I went on a co coordinated plan with, mm -hmm. with Social Security. And that's how mm -hmm. it's been done for many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dan, I think it's important to realize that one in ten seniors living with Social Security is living in poverty. Yeah. This notion that Social Security is all you need isn't true anymore. You need a pension and you need your Social Security. And, and we just want to remind again to your viewers, Dan, that our pensions, AFSCME members make, and when they're active, make on average $38,000 a year. And our pensions of our members are on average around $13,000 a year. That's no one's getting rich on thirteen. We are, we are talking about modest, modest amounts, modest both amounts. for both active and retired. Exactly. So you combine that with Social Security and you have a chance at least for a minimally dignified retirement. But this comes down to, as, as, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, jobs, 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 as, 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 as Perpich used to say. That's that, right. Uh, and uh, th this money is in the state, state economy. So as we're getting close to the end of the program now, let me see if I have this straight. Okay. Uh, for years, you know, as public employees work, you know, 25, 30, 35, maybe 40, 40 years, uh, they have sacrificed wages for a deferred uh, type, type, type of program where they're, they're getting you know, this $38,000 a year uh, to live on and they, are, they have set, set aside through, through their pension plan uh, toward, towards a modest pension of uh, $14,000 a year, a little over $1,000 a month, uh, which combined then with Social Security uh, keeps them at a modest level. They are not a burden to society. They are, they are receiving back the money that they put in. Uh, the money that they put in has, has, has earned more money through the uh, professional in, in investment of, of, the, of the state state investment board. And these retirees, by and large, stay in Minnesota. Over 90% of Nin them. 90%, yeah. And, uh, and they're, they're spending fuels uh, the state's economy. Yeah, and, it spends, uh, uh, they're spending adds $3.3 billion to the state's economy and creates over 22,500 jobs in, in our great state. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's a that's whole a lot, lot of economic activity. That's, get, that's getting a big bang for the buck. Yeah, and then all those folks who get, get those jobs, they're spending money on necessities, and that, that's just what keeps us all going and working. Yeah. Okay, Jennifer, uh, our former governor, Tim Pawlenty, uh is now on a tour uh, promoting his autobiography in, select, in, 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 in Selected State have just a minute left. Uh, he's really leading a race to the bottom uh, in wages and benefits. Uh, in, in, in 10 seconds, what, what, what do you think of that strategy? <laughs> we disagree with that. Yeah. Um, we strive for a Minnesota where every worker's labor is rewarded with wages that mm -hmm. can raise a family, um, health care if you get sick, and a retirement that's dignified. People like Tim Pawlenty who pit public workers against private workers are only trying to divide and destroy the working class. Okay. And our award-winning director, Roger Carlson, and, 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 and his, great, his great crew are uh, telling me that we're out of time. And uh, our message is, you know, all workers must stand up together for the wages and benefits you know, we all deserve.